Hey guys, tonight I am field testing my um, alcohol ink palette. Um, if you're interested in what this is and how it works, please check out my earlier videos in this playlist. Um, so I have never actually done this before and um, the swatches I did for it were not very promising. So I pulled out some additional tools besides uh, colorless markers. I have these Fantastics by Imagine Crafts. I think they were actually by Tsukiniko. Um, and these are for use with alcohol markers. And they're sort of like an alcohol brush that, um, ooh, they're not very nice. Um, it's like a foam brush that you could dip in a solution and then maybe paint with it. And they're, they're much less nice than I thought they would be. Um, I also have some alcohol, rubbing alcohol in a bottle. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I thought I might do, but it probably wouldn't help, was I thought I would um, spray the inks to reactivate them, just like mist them with watercolor the way you would do with, I mean, the way you would do with watercolor with water. Um, but alcohol evaporates so quickly that that might not actually make any difference. But we'll give it a shot and see. Doing this in the name of both science and art, it's a twofer. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of E double zero and uh, try to start applying color. And for those of you who are familiar with chameleon markers, um, this works in a very similar way. You're going to get a concentrated color at first, and then it's going to blend out into a very uh, muted pale color. And uh, actually spritzing it with colorless blender, I mean, um, rubbing alcohol solution did, I mean, you could use colorless blender. And if I had been able to track my bottle down, I would have done that too. Um, spritzing it with rubbing alcohol first actually does help get the palette ready to go. Because um, I am having less problems picking up color than I did last night when I was doing the swatch test. It seemed like I really had to scrub with the the rubbing out. I'm, I'm sorry, the colorless blender marker in order to pick up any color at all. Although this goes through the ink that I applied and took forever to dry. Um, and I'm also getting some smudging with the mitzvah Ida. Don't know if that's because I missed some graphite on the paper or what. Now it's hard to get, let me zoom in real close. It's hard to get an even application with this method. And I imagine if you were trying to cover a large area with this technique, you would be kind of foobard, foobard, foobard. As it is, I feel a little hamstringed doing it this way and it definitely takes longer than just using a brush, but it is more like painting. So if you're struggling to, um, if you're struggling to make alcohol markers work for you and you're used to painting or doing watercolor, this might work. Just seems like a, a weird sort of technique. And I first saw this technique in um, a Tim Holtz demonstration video for the alcohol markers, the palette. This is a um, Distress alcohol ink palette and um, their blender marker and solution. Um, and it sort of just seems like it's a justification for the palette existing, if that makes sense. Like sometimes um, people will come up with techniques to justify the supplies they own, which makes sense. I mean, you want to use your studio, you want to be able to work your studio, um, but it doesn't mean it's a technique you would necessarily recommend to other people. And 
and the ink I had put down and allowed to evaporate to form my palette for the E00 is already almost used up. That was a significant amount of ink, more so than um, would have been used up if I had been using a marker to apply this. So already this is not a very ink um, effective ink economical way of working. I had hoped that this was going to be like watercoloring except uh, except you know using a colorless blender to apply your color um, and it's sort of like the worst of using alcohol markers with the worst of doing watercolors. I also do, I had also hoped it would have been an affordable introduction to alcohol markers for people who are interested in using them but don't want to make the investment. Don't want to or can't afford to make an investment in a large set. Unfortunately, given how much ink this uses, uses every time you wanted to um, create an illustration with alcohol inks, you would have to refill popular colors like skin tones. And you would still have this kind of streaky effect that I've got going on. As you can see, the well that my skin tone is in is almost uh, used up. So I'm going to need to grab a paper towel because I need to clean off my nib. And at some point, I ought to give the, the Fantastics a shot as much as I think they're not going to do super well. So with this technique, it's really important that you clean your nib off between colors to get as much of the past color out of the nib. So you're just putting down pure white colorless blender or alcohol. I'm using um, a Viva paper towel because they tend to be very low on um, like lint. They're sort of the paper towel of choice around my studio if, uh, if you ascribe to such a thing. All right, so I am moving on to the next color, which is E21. No, E51. And I might need to mist my palette again. We'll see. We'll see. Now, now that I'm like using this more, I think I can imagine some applications for this. Um, it is good for kind of a watercolor effect. So if you want like sort of iridescent, shimmery light effect, light colors, light application, this might be easier than um, pulling out a bunch of colors and juggling them all especially if you only need to cover a small area although the smearing like over here by her mouth is not really thrilling for me for me for me for me this is going to sound very obvious but i think if you want this technique to work, um, colors that you use often or you're going to use a lot of in one sitting, you should probably maybe fill two palettes so that you'll have enough to get you through whatever you're working on. If you choose to try this method out. One of the problems with this method is it does require you to work fairly quick and it's a little difficult to get proper blending. Or at least I'm having difficulty getting the kind of blending I would want. I 
I'm also finding quick little dabs are working really well and then blending out, blending out, blending out, blending out. I pretty much used up all of my E double zero earlier. Another problem with that, with this, is if you're using the markers, you can stop and refill if you have the refills. Um, with this, you need to wait until the ink has evaporated before you can start painting. Oh yeah, see the purple ends up looking really muddy. I don't know if spraying down the palette would help or what. Because it's not, this is a BV that I use often. Um, so I am familiar with its properties and it looking muddy is more um, the nature of the application than the nature of the color. So this is a technique you want to avoid if you have a problem with your pieces looking kind of overworked and muddy because that would happen very quickly here. Glee here. Glee here. Also, some parts of your brush may get more ink than others, which can make application kind of spotty. Definitely, though, if you can work uh, with this method, you should be able to use chameleon markers because this is a lot harder than <laughs> the chameleon markers. So looking at the timer on my camera, it actually seems like this is going faster, possibly. Probably because I can't afford to be nitpicky. I have to just take what I can get and move on. But I'm more interested in what you guys think of this method. Does this seem like something you would be interested in using? Is this something you could see being useful for your studio or your classroom? Or your friend group if so leave me a comment um i'm curious to see if you have any ideas as to uh sort of where i'm going wrong or if you've done this method before um um, um it's definitely interesting and different from how i would normally do this a lot more like painting than um than using alcohol markers usually is although i think alcohol markers are already kind of similar to um painting in terms of how i think about them about them about them about them i think the only colors i would really need to refill in between uh projects would be the skin tones and probably the hair colors Trying to add freckles now. At least the first go round, go round, go round. And I think I'm gonna be brave and try using the Suki, let me pull out so you guys can see what I'm doing. The Suki Nico um, Fantastics brushes with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm just putting it in a watercolor pat, uh, whole pan just to give me something to work with so I'm not I'm not like leaving my my bowl exposed all right so the fantastics suck the the alcohol up pretty quickly um and I'm gonna use this light blue over here to try and add some um looks like a snow cone doesn't it add some light blue now this is much more suited to a larger application so if this is something you want to um 
like this technique is something you want to to try uh maybe give the fantastics a shot um i got mine on amazon i thought they were going to be terrible but they're actually doing an okay they're behaving like an alcohol marker would um more so than the colorless blender and i'm just using regular rubbing alcohol to apply this i could be using colorless blender but honestly the regular al rubbing alcohol is probably what those of you who are trying this out because um you'd like to split the cost of um the inks and the markers and stuff amongst a friend group this is more likely to be what you guys would use I'll probably be able to go in afterwards and apply fine details with the uh, the colorless blender marker. Now, what I should have done is when I first applied the skin, I probably should have used one of these. 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 If you find your color is too dark, just go ahead and add some rubbing alcohol on top of it. It'll help push that color to the back of the 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 something else you could probably use but i haven't tested it yet so i'm not sure is you could probably use cheap makeup applicator sponges from like the dollar tree i'll have to give that a shot since i'm doing all this um the only reason i would think it wouldn't work is um the alcohol the rubbing alcohol might melt the sponge for all i know So if you are going to use it, if you are going to give it a shot, please experiment before you, uh, you try to attack something you care about. Out. 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 I'm just sort of smoothing out some of the blends with just plain rubbing alcohol. And it seems like the rubbing alcohol kind of cleans my uh, Fantastics off so I can use it for a different color if I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. And it gets, it gets much softer with use as it has absorbed the rubbing alcohol, so. And I using the Fantastics, I actually used less of the blue than I ended up using of the, um, E double zero. So this is actually a way to kind of conserve your color, it seems like. 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 I'm pretty impressed by that thing. Um It did a better job than I expected it to do. And now I'm trying to figure out a color to use for her apron that goes with the um, the rest of the dress. I guess I'll be adding more rubbing alcohol. And it's not so much that the rubbing alcohol evaporated really quick. It's more like the Fantastics sucks it up. Um, I wonder how it would be to do something with just these. Or if I would drive myself batty. Self batty. Self batty. I mean, look at that. It's almost like what you would get from a marker. And I'm using um, the Ranger Adirondack ink. So there isn't actually a marker available of this ink in the alcohol form. You could put it in a blank Copic if you wanted to. The only real problem I can see so far is the rubbing alcohol seems to desaturate your color. Or at least that's what I'm noticing. It could be the brush, the Tsukiniko. Uh, fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Uh, fantastic. And I'm trying to get a relatively smooth blend. It's not, um, it's not really easy to do. <laughs> I actually end up messing things up sometimes more than I end up fixing them. 
And this method is pretty prone to bleeding, but I also feel like I'm using some pretty rough techniques. But honestly, the more I'm doing this, the less I can necessarily see a use case. Unless you're like a teacher with a high school comics or manga club that's really insistent on wanting to learn how to use alcohol inks and you've got a really limited budget and you really need to make it stretch. Then I suppose I could understand why this might be appealing. And I'll try some other uh, techniques now that I kind of understand how this works and how this works and how this works and how this though I am definitely going through my um what is that watermelon yeah definitely plowing through watermelon plowing through watermelon and um on the plus side if you have a store that carries the ranger inks you can get them in a three pack for about the same cost as one copic various ink they're much smaller than the copic various inks but um it's like a, if you wanted to set up a palette like this, those would be the way to go, I think. Because you can get a lot of co many colors. And if you want to learn how I set up my palette, uh, please watch the earlier videos in the series. So something else that is a problem with this technique is it's very prone to bleeding because you're putting so much um ink down and i don't know if i'm going to be able to get this fantastics clean we'll find out clean we'll find out clean although with all the ink now in the water that would almost make a nice sort of wash effect in the background so you know what since i've got it why not use it Let's try some sort of painterly abstract shapes in the background. 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 And see, it's already bleeding into the blue down there. Because um, with this, you're putting down so much um, like uh, fluid onto the paper. It's really going to change how the inks interact. And um, I think rubbing alcohol also travels more or is more prone to bleeding than um, actual uh, colorless blender. I think colorless blender might have glycerin in it. I think I heard that somewhere, but that could also just be like, um, misinformation. Sometimes it's hard to get the, the correct information for some of these materials. I actually recently wrote to Nanta, which is a, an organization that is for art supply manufacturers about extending um, a discounted membership for artists. Um, because there are artists, myself very much included, who would really, we really care about the materials we use. We're very passionate about the work we do, and that includes our tools. Um, and some of us are even reviewers. So, you know, we. We would like to know what our, our supplies are made of so we can share it with our, our readers and our viewers, but we can't necessarily find that information. Like, um, I have a heck of a time finding information about alcohol markers beyond the stuff that everybody knows by now, probably. So I really hope NAMTA d does decide to um, open up um, a more affordable tier for like independent reviewers and uh, independent artists like myself. And uh, they wrote back and asked me why I wanted, like, could you explain why you want to join? Because we'd like to present this to our board. And um, I was happy to oblige, but it, it blows my mind. Like, why, why wouldn't an artist 
want access to this. Why wouldn't we want to know what, you know, have access to what the supplies we use, what they're made of? It's not like we're going to turn around and make them at home, but it would tell me, um, you know, if I know there's glycerin, for example, in colorless blender, well, then that might be a reason to use colorless blender over rubbing alcohol because I'm more likely to get the effect I want. Now these have a cap and I think the cap is more um, to keep these from getting all over the place after they've been used. This one, I guess this is gonna be like my pink one. Who knows? I haven't quite, I haven't quite figured that one out all the way. So I'm gonna wipe out my, um, the pan that I was storing rubbing alcohol in. And um, I think I'm going to refill it and um, start doing her hair because it just seems like a more economical method and a little bit less muddy method of um, applying the ink to the paper, more so than the colorless blender, just because this is a little more juicy. And of my three colorless blenders, my Prisma is the most um, juicy. Um, it puts down out the most liquid, although it's dirty, dirty, dirty now, so now so my copic one needs a replacement nib and the blick oh wrong side the blick one is just a little stiff and it's not really as um as juicy or forgiving as the other two but the fantastic seem to be doing a good job of um putting down larger quantities of color but f actually now that i think about this um, oh, hey, sure. Why don't we try using the bullet nib? And why don't we try using it to do tiny, like, freckle details? Because that ought to, hopefully, it's actually really hard to use with the bullet nib. So I'm going to clean my bullet nib off and resort to my brush nib. Which makes it hard to do tiny freckles. They all end up about the same size. Anyway, keep your fingers crossed that that board meeting goes well. Because I would be, as an artist and an art supply reviewer, I would be thrilled to join such an organization and get to attend their events and get to talk to suppliers and manufacturers about what I want to see in supplies. That would be phenomenal. I don't know why that isn't an option. Um, and if you're interested in that, um, I'll add an adaptation to NAMTA. Um, you should write to them and let them know that you are also interested. Or if you enjoy my content, but you don't necessarily want to join the organization, I would appreciate it if you wrote to them on my behalf and said that you um, had heard about it from me and that you think it's a good opportunity. Even a scholarship edition would be great. Be great. All right, let's start filling in that hair. And I think this is like um, hazel or hazelnut. Is definitely more dec. Oh shoot! It's gonna it's gonna bleed into her face. I should have done it the other way. I'll just have to try and be careful then. And not to put down too much liquid, much liquid, much liquid, much liquid. I mean, I have considered joining uh, CHA, which is an organization for like craft supplies for a while. Um, I would actually love to attend their conference. Um, I don't know how much they'd want me though, because I, this is this, my channel and my blog are not really geared towards crafters. Um, it's more geared towards artists or um, crafters who are interested in in the artier side of what they do, you know. Um, I'm not going to show you guys how to make cards and or use stamps or um, make shaker cards. I mean, those things are cute and they're great, but they're plenty more women who are 110 percent and men who are 110 percent more interested in them than i am so um my suki nico has absorbed um 
alcohol all the way up to the end. I can feel it, which should make it a little less thirsty when I dip it in. Um, it did a pretty good job of applying hazelnut. Definitely more painterly. Um, a softer sort of feeling. So if you think um, Copics might be a little, or not just Copics, but alcohol markers might be a little too intense for you, um, using this palette with the Sukiniko um, Fantastics might really be the way for you. I'm, I'm actually, now that I've like started playing with the Fantastics, I actually like the palette a lot, <laughs> a lot better. Um, I might end up doing a test that is just um, with the Fantastics. Not tonight, but another night. Because they're kind of fun. They could be, I mean, they're not great. They could be improved upon. But, like, the idea is solid. And, uh... I think I just found these because I will browse Amazon's uh, like scrapbooking stuff all, all the time, like once a week at least, um, just looking for ideas. Same way I will watch uh, videos of other people doing things, um, all kinds of people from crafters to illustrators to calligraphers. I'm like interested in everything, even though I primarily focus on comics and illustration. Um, and I mean, if I was an artist who only kept to the art supplies sold in art stores, I my world would be poorer because I wouldn't have these alcohol inks. Well, I'd have the Copic ones to an extent to choose from, but I wouldn't have the Tim Holtz ones and I wouldn't have the Fantastics and I wouldn't know about the palette. And this really opens up a more painterly approach. Like even more painterly than... Um, what was previously available and honestly alcohol markers are very painterly um as a watercolor artist i find a lot of uh commonalities between the two media that's why i love them both so much um but this is a really cool really different technique um and the sunki nikos definitely made it a lot more accessible for me because they handle the pigments differently and they're able to better saturate things and they can make better use of what's in the palette. Um, they're just really cool. But um, if you are an artist and um, you are not at all interested in craft supplies, I highly, I highly recommend you rethink that stance because um, you're missing, you can be missing out on some great things that don't get marketed to us for whatever reason, for whatever reason, for whatever reason. For I do, I have noticed that um, right now the, the hot thing, the hot people to really market to are like, um, not calligraphers, but hand letterers and um, like stampers, crafters. And I think it's because people are so interested in both of those um, topics right now so they're the ones to invest your money in and as a comic artist i mean i'm always going to i'm always going to shill for my own i'm always going to be like comics that's that's what y'all should be thinking about um but i i do also do a lot of conventions i talk to a lot of young people about what they want to do and a lot of them want to become comic artists and they want to have the supplies so and i mean honestly the stuff aimed at teenagers is just garbage when it comes to comics, like it's insulting garbage. Um, I plan on doing, if I ever get the funds, um, I plan on doing a whole series where I buy manga, how to make manga sets and like just review them. And then hopefully, ideally point out like alternatives, things that are better, how to put your own set together. So if that is something that appeals to you, and of course I'm biased, I'm like, of course that would appeal to you, it appeals to me. Um, and that's something that would appeal to you though. Uh, please, uh, consider checking out my Patreon. Please keep watching my videos. Um, let me know that you like what I do because that would make a big difference for me. Or even consider writing to some of those companies on my behalf, um, and ask them to send me a sample because my emails to them go ignored, but they might listen to you guys, the buying Oh, I'm a buyer too, but the buying, consuming uh, 
public. Yeah, these Suki Nikos are a lot of fun with the the ink palette. It's a shame that when Tim Holtz was like demonstrating this, I mean, it makes sense why he was, but he was using the, the Adirondack marker filled with their colorless blender. Um, and it might actually have a nice big tip like this does. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to like get my hands on one and show it, but like this, the, the Fantastics have made a difference in my opinion of this because they handle, um, they don't handle like a paintbrush, but they handle more like a paintbrush. So they're pretty cool. Oh, am I going to get like some light green ink out of this? Yeah, you can even like make lighter colors by mixing alcohol with, with, yeah, the color from the palette, right? So you can use it for backgrounds or accents or whatever. So this is cool. I am enjoying this different way to think about alcohol inks, alcohol inks, alcohol inks. Although I would not recommend, um, I don't recommend making your own alcohol inks. And I have videos detailing my experiences with that coming up. I haven't yet found up a recipe that is um, either. <sighs> so our time has value. Um, so the time I spend making alcohol inks in colors that are just like really desaturated and unexciting and just blah. Okay. Um, I could have just gone like uh, my freelance rate is 15 minutes an hour. So when I am doing projects like this, when I'm planning projects like this, I do try to keep the value of my time as an artist in mind. Um, and I think you guys should too. If you do, you're doing it because you just want to play around and you enjoy doing it, it's one thing. But if you're doing it because you're researching possible techniques, if it ends up taking you a long time um, and you're not happy with the result, then the money you save doing it at home isn't necessarily worth it. I mean, if you're just flat broke and like, you know, you, you can't afford anything else. Well, I mean, there are people who paint with coffee. So, so you can make it work. There are people who make it work. And I'm not insulting the people who make it work. I'm just saying if it's not worth your time, if your money could be better spent elsewhere or doing other things, then why force yourself to make something just because it can be made? So that's like my little spoiler about um, making your own alcohol inks. Using, I mean, not using existing alcohol inks as a base. Like clearly these are designed for this. Not Maybe not for this. I don't think the Copics like it so well. The Adirondacks seem okay with it. Um, but... They, are, they have really bright dyes. Uh, the dyes take to alcohol well. A lot of the dyes that I tried in my um, homemade ink came from like Brusho um, or like synthetic watercolors. Um, I, haven't, I haven't like disassembled Sharpies yet. And I don't know if I want to because um, that kind of like defeat, <laughs> that's to the point where it's defeating the purpose. If I'm, if I am, um, breaking down things that work to make, to possibly make something. It's not necessarily worth it for you guys. Um, and it's not necessarily worth it for me. Really worth it for me. Really. Just because something can be done doesn't mean it should be done. And it doesn't mean you should feel guilty for spending $10 to get three little three ounce bottles of ink, if you're going to use them, if they're going to better your art, if they're going to help you be a better artist, then there's no shame in that. Shame in that. Shame in that. I am now using E13. Ah, this is Oriental. This is Hazelnut. They, they dry and apply so much darker when you're doing it this way, this way. This way, this way, this way. And if you guys like the colors that I'm using, I can give you, or I can read out my palette to you. Especially, um, the skin tones aren't bad. I like, I really like the hair color. That Those hair colors would make beautiful skin tones. 
And uh, they don't always make the best skin tones when I'm applying them, so. Sorry, I'm testing to see if it is still wet before I move on. I'm gonna use, I think this is um, like stone washed. But um, going back to the Namta thing, if I knew, if I had an idea of what kind of dyes they were using to make alcohol inks, I would definitely go back and like try to make my own without disemboweling my markers. You can also clean the color out of your brush. And this is the same brush I started with, the same Fantastics. You can clean it out in a little pool of rubbing alcohol, just like I'm doing right there. See, and it gets almost all of it out. It's the same principle as the colorless blender, I think. And you can even squeeze it. And these are, for what they are, they're straws with foam in them and a cap. But for what they are, they work really well. I'm really impressed. I bet, I mean, I really thought I was going to do this and it was going to be a trudge. Like, I was like, this is, I mean, I think if you watch my prior videos when I'm swatching these, um, I was just like, this is not going to go well. Um, so I am delighted that it is going better than I thought and that we're finding techniques together. Um, I know sometimes I can kind of come across as like a bit of a battle axe, just like this impossible to please person um <laughs> sorry about that uh, but i really truly love art supplies i have like a deep passion for this this opened up my world when i was a kid so i take it seriously and i take promises seriously and the fact that this which i thought wasn't gonna work and i'm still figuring it out but the fact that this actually kind of sort of maybe works is exciting to me because like you know i never thought about this when i was first learning about alcohol markers i mean i knew i knew you could like um apply the the inks to plastics but i thought it would stain the plastics to the point where you couldn't use it for anything else again so i'm really excited about the fact that this is this is seemingly working These swatches are not, I wish, I wish I'd done the swatches with this now. Like I didn't even know I'd forgotten I had these. Um, cause this looks like a marker dying and this, and it doesn't look, I mean, the hair really looks good to me. Like, I really like that, how the hair turned out. Um, 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 what was I going to say? Shoot. Anyway, I'm, I'm excited about this technique um and the possibilities it might have and now that i like have the right materials going and i have like a process going you know like, it makes a big difference and i'm excited to share this with you guys um because i haven't seen too many people actually using this technique especially with their own art um i don't know if too many people know about it other than like the Tim Holtz fanatics. But see, this is more and, and see, it's so it's so much like watercolor that um, if I were a teacher and I had a class that really was into comics and really wanted to like learn wanted to replicate the sort of stuff they see online or the sort of stuff um, artists are using for like manga color spreads, um, I would just push them towards watercolor. I would buy um, a set of tubes and a bunch of those round palettes that you guys have seen me use and I'd put a dollop in each and we'd go from there. Because uh, that's way more economical than this. But if they were super insistent that it had to be alcohol markers, um, this might be a fun way to do it. Or it can just be like a fun way to change up how you. So I'm dabbing that greenish ink that I just soaked up. I just realized like, hey, I could be applying that. I could be adding that to this. And it's very, very light. I think the alcohol is going to do more to push it back. But anyway, 
if I were teaching a class or giving a lecture dealing with kids who wanted to um, learn how to use alcohol markers, this this could actually be a feasible way of doing it where everyone would get access to materials and it wouldn't cost me six sets of markers. Because you guys, you guys know I'm really big about skin tones and um, it is actually hard to get. I, I am more about skin tones than any other color. Um, because you can you can really fudge a lot. You can really get away with having very few other colors as long as you have good skin tones. Um, so, um, oh yeah, I need to refill that. But with this, I really only have, let's see, I have E double, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, E double zero, which wasn't actually that significant. E 21, which was E, um, no, I'm sorry, E 51, E 21, which is an okay skin tone. And then, um, Oriental and Hazel were both really pretty in her hair, um, and they would be very pretty for darker skins. So, um, really, with this technique, you might be able to, like, get away with just, like, nine earth tones for skin. Which is, like, if, like, if you saw my marker collection, I have way more than nine when it comes to skin tones. So, like, nine is impressive to me. Nine is like, oh, only nine? Only nine? Only nine? Only nine? Yeah, this is so much better for applying those skin tones. I was... I was a fool. I'm glad I pulled out the Fantastics. This makes it so much easier. And I'm not cleaning my... my brush as much. It's just way less hassle. So if you're going to do this technique, until I can get back to you guys with the um, the cheap makeup swabs from like Dollar Tree or Walmart, uh, please give the Fantastics from Suki Nico a shot. Um, they seem to work really well. And they're working with alcohol. I mean, this is rubbing alcohol that was used to distribute these inks. So it's not, I didn't use a bunch of uh, expensive blender solution on it. And those of you who are familiar with my other work, this definitely looks different from my other marker pieces. Um, it, of course, it looks like it was done by the same person, but... Like just the way of handling the inks is different. Um, and I think that's a great thing. Like, um, that is why you learn, that's why you try different techniques is so you can do something different from what you would normally do. So the fact that this offers such a different way of handling color for me, like, that's exciting. And adding some shadow. I think this is like wild plum or something like that from the Adirondacks. This is the Adirondack section of my palette. And I even have room to grow, which is important, I think, in any collection. Because um, you're going to find out over time what you still need. So it's... It's fine if you don't have a huge collection to start with because um, the things you think you need might not even be. Oh, yeah, I got to use that. Even though the background's going to look kind of like a hot mess because it's got like all these different colors in it, 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 like all these different. I know the background's kind of weird, but I also like it. <laughs> Um, not like, not, it's not like, oh, that's the best background I've ever done, but it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. It's different, and you can absorb your colored, um, rubbing alcohol out just by compressing your Fantastics with a, with a, um, paper towel. If, if that's, like, a thing you care about. I, I care, because, like, I'm using the same one. I mean, what's the point? I can, like, get a lot of uses, probably. Oh, it's making a heart shape. Oh no, that's cute. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, happy accident. Cute stuff. clean um it might be less mess if you don't mind the fumes the fumes are kind of making me a little nauseous because al rubbing alcohol just kind of gets to me now uh and i'm not i should have like i have a fan going but i should have a window open probably all the window open every window in the apartment open to do this i think i'm gonna get spicy and uh Oh, you know what? I shouldn't. I should just let the background be. I have a tendency to like overwork the heck out of things. I should just step away from the car. Problem is when I'm having a good time, I don't, I'm not good about knowing when to call it quits. And with art, sometimes the longer you push, the better it looks, but sometimes the more you push, the worse it gets. And sometimes that line is a very fine one. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to call this light. I'm going to mix in a little more green because the background needs more green anyway. Right guys. I mean, really like how cool is that? Like we can mix up, custom bespoke small batch <laughs> alcohol ink colors ah you can really get away with like a tiny palette if with this like you don't need you don't need the whole color family to make it work you can make it work right there that's that's crazy right just me i'm the only one who thinks that's like great and you know like, I guess they, I guess, like, okay, when they talked about the chameleon markers, right? Like, I could tell that that was a system that wasn't going to work for me because I'm persnickety and I want things to be a certain way. And that requires a little bit just, like, letting go. And I'm not good at that. But this system lets me mix it myself and I don't lose the color back to the colorless blender. So, you know, like, I can better, I can better control what my paper is going to do what's going to happen on my illustration so you know i guess it's <laughs> it's funny that this is like in a way a very like out of my control sort of thing um but i'm enjoying it so much because there's just enough control for me sorry i'm cleaning oh wow if i squeeze it all the old colors come through <sighs> They actually didn't affect, that did not affect us that much. It's soaked though. I can pop that cap on. See, there's like pink. I think you can see it. There's pink in that straw. Anyway. Use that green. And the paper towel just kind of like helps randomize the sort of um like unorganic shapes that i was achieving with the brush you know like it just makes it um, more uh chaotic mm, less planned mm, thank you i'm trying to think of a certain word and i can't it's not coming to me it's killing me it'll come to me after the video because that is the way all right so what next? Well, I'll take another one last photo. So if you're into this and you were like, oh gosh, back of your video is too long. Um, read the blog because I'll have like a write-up explanation, all that stuff where you can get everything. And the blog is netasoup.blogspot.com. Um, and watch the other videos in the playlist if you were like, that looks really cool. I want to give that a shot, but I don't know where to start. 
um, watch that because I even I think I even went it over what colors I use but I'll go over the colors for you guys right here I have EW0 E51 E21 E34 E13 RO2 BV00 E49 that's in my like portrait set Y11 YG01 YG41 YG07, G00, BG000, B32, BV01, R22 in my, these colors are probably going to be useful at some point. And then I have um, in the Adirondack or Distress inks, Citrus, Sailboat Blue, Watermelon, Butterscotch, Rust, Teakwood, Terracotta, Stonewashed, and Wild Plum. So um, I was pretty satisfied with the colors it makes me want to explore even more of the ranger inks um i even kind of want to try putting them in a they just seem like more um syrupy more saturated more concentrated than the various inks um so i kind of want to try putting it in a blank copic marker at some point and uh if i do that i will either write about it or uh, record it for you guys so you can see it um i'm becca hilburn i hope you guys found this video useful informative um inspiring um, if you enjoy content like this, I highly recommend you subscribe to my channel where I will be doing even more tutorials and wild crazy person experiments. Um, and if you would like to help me make more content like this, there's a few ways you can do that. You can share my videos to your social networks. In fact, I would greatly appreciate it if you did do just that because it helps me find new people who might be interested in the things I make. Um, I would also appreciate it if you considered backing my Patreon. Um, it's never mandatory, but your financial support helps me buy supplies. It also helps me keep my lights on. I am a professional artist and illustrator. I do have an hourly rate. Doing these videos, doing the blog, um, I'm not necessarily compensated for those. I don't work with a lot of sponsors. I'm really picky. Um, so if you want to help sponsor that kind of content, think of it like PBS. PBS does fundraising jobs. They really fundraising drives they rely on public support i rely on your goodwill as well um and your support helps unlock more content like this um this is actually the bonus tutorial oh that my patron uh my patrons unlocked um i did I, I have to do two and it really doesn't matter which month these are for uh it's either for february or march and the other videos either for march or february so We'll find out when I list it. But um, so I would really like to thank my patrons for um, having faith in me, backing me, wanting more content. Thank you guys so much. It really means the world to me. Um, your support is huge. It, it really is. So many people, um, they can say it, but they don't they can't afford to back it up or they don't care to back it up. But you guys do back it up. And I really appreciate it. That also goes out to my super commenters who always have a kind word to say. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive. I love you guys. Um, so I'm Becca Hilburn. This was the field test for using a um, Tim Holtz alcohol ink palette filled with various inks and um, Ranger and Adirondack inks using Suki Nico Fantastics and a Prismacolor color blender, as well as some common household rubbing alcohol to um, paint with alcohol inks. I hope you guys have a phenomenal day. I'll see you later. Bye.